I watched some very dry talks about Sims 4 systems, but learned some interesting things about how the game runs. How does the game work, and why do Sims do these annoying animations before they obey us? Why does simulation lag happen, and what does that mean for players with low-end machines? Let's find out. Simulation lag is the name of something that annoys nearly everyone, and many players know it by name. When Sims just stall out and fail to respond for several seconds, or longer, before they do something, that's simulation lag. Sometimes entire flocks of sims will stand in one spot acting creepy. So why does simulation lag happen? You could just sum it up by saying, the game gets behind. But it's actually kind of fascinating how a lot of these things work. The Sims 4 uses a couple separate processes to run. There's a graphical side and the simulation side. These two systems talk to one another to get things done. For the simulation, the game actually processes one sim at a time and they go in line. This happens so fast you won't normally see it because processors make decisions in milliseconds. Doing things this way is necessary to sync everyone up. If the simulation and graphical side fail to line up, bad things happen. If a sim fails to do something, the line stops moving and we have to wait on the game to say, okay, I can't do that right now. This can cause other sims who are in between moves to just stop. This is simulation lag. If you hate simulation lag, like my video, because it'd be really funny to see a video about lag become my most liked video. So moving on, I watched a GDC talk about overcoming technical challenges to make Sims 4. Sims have to stay in sync because of the two separate processes, and because sometimes two Sims need to interact with one another. For certain animations, Sims need to be face to face to do an animation together, so they have to be in the right spot. So let's play how Sims sync. Let's say our Sim is going to meet up with Eliza to insult her. It'll take 30 Sim minutes for Eliza to get there. Because these two are quite far away, the game could do a number of things to get them in the right spots at the right time. Eliza will spend her time doing a little jog to get there. Our Sim may walk a short distance to get in the spot where he's going to meet with Eliza, but his part of this synchronization only takes 15 minutes and he needs to wait for her. The game wants Sims to always be doing something, so with the remaining time it says, okay, I have time to do an idle animation without being late. So we do our idle and our insult animation. This happens constantly in the game. It's like a complicated dance. The game may even say, I'll do the idle animation before I move because I know I have time to kill. When Sims are going to meet up, they have a variety of options on how to accomplish that. It's possible Eliza's farther away and will jog. If she's close, she'll just walk. When Sims have plenty of time, they actually make an effort to walk around one another. But when it's behind, it may just toss all of that out the window. That's right. I learned that if a Sim is behind really badly and trying to meet up, it will just stop caring about walking around people and instead just walk right through them. I don't even care. That's a cool decision. I mean, hey, priorities, right? But a key point in all this is that sometimes when the game does an idle animation and it frustrates you, it's because the sim is deliberately killing some time. Animations always try to finish so it can be frustrating, but it's by design. So when you do an interaction or tell a sim to do something, if you'll get there too early or you have time to kill, it might throw in an idle animation just like the ones you hate. It says, oh, 15 minutes to walk and five minutes to bop my head. It's kind of like it always needs to be doing something if the gap is big enough. Autonomy is one reason the game might fall behind or get out of sync between the graphics and simulation sides. Sims AI is on whether you are in full control or not because of townies. Essentially, to choose to do something, a sim will look at every possible interaction they can do on their own. If you use the auto solve feature, it will need to pick which toilet to use. But for regular AI, it may look at everything around, from looking at decor to using a computer. Because of this, just the act of adding objects to a lot, especially when you've added a few dozen, it can cause the game simulation to get further and further behind.
if you have a crap machine and make it far into a safe, you're probably going to start having bad lag. So it's fine when you start with a single sim with very few objects, but as you add them and more options become available for sims, the game starts to get worse and worse. So it gets worse as you add more objects and decorations, spend more time on speed three, and adding sims to the active area will amplify this. It can catch up, but will just fall behind again. If your system's bad enough, it'll fall behind on speed one sometimes. Just hopefully not often. There are a few mods that can help a lot with this, such as Turbo Drivers Simulation Unclogger. This finds sims that haven't done anything in a while and kills what they were trying to do so things can move forward. Seriously Sims Simulation Lag Fix, originally made by Xerox, does something similar, but I don't think there's a magic bullet because how it runs is so tied to your CPU. These do help a lot though. Playing at speed two or three increases the risk the game will fall behind, but pausing the game will give it time to catch up. Whether it falls behind or not is highly dependent on your computer's processor. It's not just about frames per second in terms of graphics, it's also about time moving too fast for the game to process all the moves that Sims will take. These moves Sims take normally happen in milliseconds, but sometimes after you fast forwarded or if your PC's not up to it, it'll get very badly behind and all sims just stop. It's actually pretty eerie sometimes when this happens. I don't know why, but it reminds me of Children of the Corn. The Sims 4 system requirements list the Core 2 Duo as adequate to running the game. It's a very badly dated processor, so I disagree. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> it's really not a good idea, especially with more and more packs. I can't believe it, but you could run a $300 laptop with $700 worth of Sims expansions. And of course, each expansion adds more options for Sims. While the developers did a really good job at making the game run on low-end hardware at the cost of pretties, the slower the processor, the more likely it is to get behind when you play on speed three. Mods are awesome, and you know I like what people have done because I just did a list of 50 mods to get a lot of good ones in one place. But you need to be aware that modders do not have the same restrictions as Maxis. They can add just about anything they want, like superhero ground slams and increasing the amount of Sims. But having mods at all requires you to have a little bit better of a PC. Especially when you add more Sims, it's going to be more likely you experience client or simulation lag. In the past, I've played around some and did a hundred sims in one house video one time. I'm very insulting to townies and there were like 120. <laughs> Something you'll notice is that nearly every video that uses that many sims will end in a similar way. Nobody is on schedule, they struggle for control of the toilet, pee themselves as they stand there, unable to think. They get into the pool and drown from low energy or stand in the cold until they freeze. Anyway, things like fires will happen and they won't be able to think to put themselves out in time. And the Sims will get so badly behind that they literally start starving to death. It's actually pretty horrific if you think about it too much, but let's stop doing that. What happens to these Sims is simulation lag. The game will accidentally narrow the population down with these deaths until it can properly think. So not all of them will go, but it'll get down to around a dozen left and resume as normal. Anyway, I enjoyed doing that video and it's commentary and definitely no gray still plays does those type. So I'm not downing the concept. It's just tied in with simulation lag and the queue and game performance in general. More Sims, more interactive objects, faster time, we do not all have the same experience with the game. I guess PC games are sort of like that, but it's usually just graphical. Sims developers faced unique challenges because of how things need to sync up. They did a good job in that area, but there isn't a perfect solution. Because YouTube recommends it, I've enabled channel memberships as an alternative to Patreon. I mean, if you wanna give me money for making videos, who am I to doubt your judgment? Thanks for watching and I hope you found some of this insightful.